Under the starlight, our fate changed that night. The prophecy reborn with the power alone of his horn. Opening his eyes, he saw it all. She was coming. The moth and the maid stood tall. The moth stared at unicorn kind, and he spoke our future. Shrouded by hate and spite, lurking in the shadows of the past, suppressed by the blinding light, but he will always last. A pale coat and curved horns, when the stars shine brightest, she is born. The mage's content face and the moth's prophetic words are heard rejoiced. It was finally time. We are going to be free of this place. We are going to be saved. Oh, that night. He could still hear the overpowering uproar of the unicorn's shears clearly in his mind. It was terribly loud and have drawn so much unwanted attention to him afterwards. He wasn't the prophesized filly. All he did was receive the prophecy. Go away. Let me work in peace. Moth twitched his withers. Walking up out of the ravine was so tiring. It felt like he was getting nowhere. What could Mage Amaranth possibly want that's so important? She needs me to meet her on the surface. Though, it could be anything. She was all about the atmosphere when she wanted to speak to Moth about something that she deemed urgent. The Dune Stallion started into a trot. He wanted to save his energy to get back down, but this was taking too long. He could see it. The ledge of the island's surface. He could hear the crash of the ocean waves. Not far now. He finished the last few strides to the top with a canter. Once up there, stopping hard and looking around, he could make out the chestnut coat of Mage Amaranth, even on a night as dim as this. When she noticed her prophet, she looked his way. The white on her head was almost in the shape of an amaranth flower itself. She was standing beneath a crab apple tree with two other unicorns, both pale in color. Moth trotted over to the tree, his ears shifting. He bowed his head. Hi, Mage Amaranth. You summoned me? The smooth expression of Mage Amaranth did not say, This is very important. But it wouldn't be the first time her face could have been deceiving. Now that he was up closer, Moth noticed a newborn foal. Their horns were yet to grow in and tumbling to balance on her legs. Butterfly, his sister, lying down and her mate Nimbus. He looked at each of them back and forth. White foal, no moon. He whipped his gaze over to Mage Amaranth when he realized why he was called up there. But before he could speak, she began. Yes, Moth. It is time. Her tone was soft. Who knew the prophesied fool was your niece? Well, actually, I did. Butterfly said, smirking at the end. Moth's attention shot to the Red Dune Mare. You knew? I was obviously the first to know. I can't tell you how many visions I've seen. She replied. Right. He grumbled, shaking his head forgetfully. I envy your future sight, but I would have appreciated it if you'd told me. And ruin the surprise. It wasn't a very exciting surprise. Not to Moth, anyway. He did not ask for a supposedly all-powerful niece running around. He turned his gaze to Mage Amaranth again. But for what reason did you want me? I was only given the prophecy. He questioned. You haven't guessed? No. He wanted to shout. Before she could continue, the filly's father spoke up. You're going to mentor her. Moth tossed his head up and stepped back. Excuse me? When did I say I was looking for an apprentice? He shot a stern look at the mage. I'm aware you've never asked for one, but I and Butterfly both see glimpses of what lies ahead. We think only good things can come from this. Answered Amaranth calmly. Or it could just be to torture me. He wouldn't put it past his sister. 
Why not an actual magic teacher? We just told you. When I've looked at you, I've seen flashes of the both of you. I've seen her as a grown mare, wise and level-headed. Butterfly told him. It's not like you have to train her right now. You still have a few moon cycles of freedom. Moth looked defeated. So, I don't have a choice? I suppose not. I do feel bad about keeping this a secret, but we feel strongly that this is how it's meant to be. Moth flicked his ears. There wasn't a way of getting out of this, so he reluctantly accepted his faith and groaned. What's her name? We decided on Star. Nimbus, whose pure white coat looked exactly like the fillies, answered. A bit on the nose. After tripping and flopping around during their conversation, Star managed to hold herself up, swishing her tail and sniffing. She almost seemed surprised that she didn't fall down again. I know, but Nimbus was very passionate about the name. How could I say no? Butterfly said. Moth took a breath and stood on his hooves firmly. He met the mage Amaranth's face with his. She is young now, but we all know what you're asking me to train her for, yes? He asked with a more serious tone than ever. Mage Amaranth nodded. The eye contact with the prophets unwavering. Yes. She is going to destroy Kameta.